Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise. In this channel, I discuss personal finance, investing, and all the while surviving in a multi-generational household. If these topics sound like something you want to learn more about, I would much appreciate it if you consider subscribing and also hitting that like button. And if you have yet to download your free copy of the Sandy Generation's Guide to Financial Security, 10 Steps to Securing Your Family's Financial Future, please go to my website at financialtortoise.com and do so. I send out weekly newsletters with other great tips on mastering your money, and I wouldn't want you to miss them. In the world of total market index funds, the three of the most popular index funds are Vanguard's VTSAX, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, Charles Schwab's SWTSX, Schwab Total Stock Market Index Fund, and Fidelity's FZROX. Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund. In this video, we're going to deep dive into these three to determine which total market index fund is really the king of all total market index funds. But first, what is a total market index fund? In a nutshell, think of a total market index fund as a fund that essentially owns all publicly traded stocks in the US market. When you purchase a share of a total market index fund, you're purchasing a piece of big companies like Apple, Google, and Tesla, as well as thousands of other smaller companies you might have never heard of. And it does this by passively tracking the performance of a broad stock market benchmark, such as the Wilshire 5000, the CRSP US Total Market Index, or the Dow Jones US Total Stock Index. And if you're new to the world of investing, total market index funds are one of the best ways to gain some great exposure to the market. One key reason is due to diversification. You might have heard of the term, don't put all your eggs in one basket. This is an important concept when it comes to investing in the market. We might have heard through the rumor mill about a specific hot stock or a hot company we should invest in. But acting on such tips is a really risky move. And study after study have shown that stock picking is really a loser's game. But that doesn't mean we don't want to invest in stocks. We just want diversity. And a total market index fund is one of the most effective ways we can get that diversity. Essentially, through one fund, we automatically get the diversity of thousands thousands of stocks with various market capitalization. Another reason why purchasing a total market index fund is a smart move is because these funds are self-cleansing. The market is not stagnant. Companies come and go routinely. Just take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. When the list was initially created in 1896, it consisted of the 12 of the biggest and the most influential corporations of the day, the titans of the American industry. Do you know how many of the original 12 are still on the list? Only one, General Electric. The remaining companies transformed or just faded away with time. But what's exciting is that they were replaced with new and upcoming companies that later took on the hem of being the most influential influential companies at their time. And this translates to limited downside, but unlimited upside for you. What do I mean by this? Think of a company and its stock. The worst possible scenario for this company is bankruptcy. And when a company goes bankrupt, its stock just goes to zero. And it disappears off of a total market index fund because it no longer has any market capitalization. But if a company is doing well, the best performance a company can deliver isn't 100%. It can be 1000%. 10,000% or more. Tesla is a great example of this. In the last 10 years, its rate of return has been, if you can wait for it, 24,000%. If you hold on to a total market index fund, you get the unlimited upside of companies like Tesla. During these 10 years, there have been many other electric car companies that have faded away and disappeared. A total market fund automatically replace these dead and dying from its fund with new and upcoming companies with great potential. And don't forget that when we own a total market index fund, it's not just a slip of traded paper. You own a piece of a real business. All these companies being represented in a total market index fund are filled with people working tirelessly to grow and provide excellent service to their customers. And many of you who might be working for these companies can attest to this. The market is a competitive, unforgiving environment where only the best survive. And because of this intense environment, companies are working hard to create value and ultimately create returns for investors like you and I. But my personal favorite reason why I love total market index funds is their simplicity. We are all very busy individuals. You have careers to manage, families to take care of, and lives to live. But that doesn't mean I don't want to invest in the market because I don't have the time to learn about all the intricacies of a stock market. This really is where a total market index fund shines. If you can make one investing decision in your life, and if you take anything away from this video, it is this. Purchase any of the three total market index funds I mentioned in this video, 
and hold them for life. It will literally be the best investing decision you will ever make. Wall Street tries to convince us that we need their professional services because of how complex the market is and only they know how to navigate it. Well, I say forget them. You can invest effectively in the market. And though I'll go through the details here in a little bit why I think a specific total market index fund might be better than the other, to be completely transparent with you, you will come out a winner with any one of them. I have my personal preference, but all three are very solid options and you really can't go wrong with any one of them. All right, but you didn't come here to hear that. You're likely an index fund nerd like me, so you want the nitty gritty difference between VTSIX, SWTSX, and FZROX. So let's get right to it. In order to guide our comparison here, I'm going to anchor off of six key criteria to determine the best total market index fund. And it's in the order of least importance to what I believe is the most important criteria. So first, let's talk about the lowest hanging fruit, fund history. And the general assumption I'm going to use here is that the older the fund, the more established it is, and thus you can subjectively rationalize that it is better. And in this category, VTSAX is the winner. It is the oldest of the bunch. It was created in 1992, whereas SWTSAX was created in 1999, and FCROX is the newest kid in the block with only having been created in 2018. Now I say again that this is a subjective criteria because it's like saying because someone is older, he or she is smarter. But I believe it's a good starting place for our comparison. Next, let's take a look at asset under management. That's a fancy term for how big a fund is. Now another subjective assumption I'm going to use here is that bigger the fund is, the better it is. If more people are buying into the fund, it should be a better product, right? Well, it could be, but it could also just be better marketing. But hang with me here. When it comes to size, VTSAX is another clear winner. With $1.3 trillion in assets under management, the SWTSX and FZROX pale in comparison. They respectively have $18 billion and $13 billion assets under management. This is not a surprise when we compare this to when the fund started. VTSAX has been around the longest, so more people have bought into the fund during the past 30 years. However, what's quite interesting is how FZROX has really caught up in size compared to SWTSAX. And the next criteria of comparison will show you why this may be. The next difference between these three funds, and this is the one that most people talk about, is the expense ratio. VTSAX has an expense ratio of 0.04%. What this means is that if you have $10,000 invested in VTSAX, Vanguard will take $4 annually for their service it provides in managing your money. Keeping it secure, ensuring the fund is well diversified, and all other auxiliary service necessary to keep the company functioning. SWTSX charges 0.03%, and the clear winner here is FZROX with 0.0%. Yes, you heard me right. Fidelity charges nothing for you to invest with their total market index fund. At this point, you might be thinking, forget when the fund started or the asset under management, I'll take FZROX. I mean, who can beat free, right? Well, yes, I agree that 0% is better than 0.03% or 0.04%. However, you want to step back and put this into dollars to understand the real scale of savings. In a $10,000 portfolio, the difference between 0.04% and 0% is really $4. Yes, if you have 100,000, it's $40. And if you have a million dollars, it comes out to $400. But before you finalize your decision, let's take a look at a few other comparison criteria. When it comes to minimum investment, SWTSX and FZROX comes out a clear winner compared to VTSAX. And this is because they have no minimum investment requirement, whereas VTSAX requires at least $3,000. If you don't have $3,000 to invest, this could be an important criteria to consider in your decision making. Fund composition is another notable key difference amongst the three total market index funds. It's easy to assume that when we're talking about the total market index, there is just one index, right? I mean, all companies mean all companies, no? Well, interestingly, just like life, it's not that simple. When we look under the hood of these three funds, what we'll find is that the total number of companies being represented in each of these three funds differ quite a bit. VTSAX is made up of slightly more than 4,000 companies. SWTSAX is made up of somewhere around 3,500 companies. And FZROX is made up of around 2,600 companies. You might be thinking, what the heck? Those are some big differences. All three funds advertise 
themselves as a total market index fund, but it seems like some include more in their definition of total, while others include less. So why is this the case? The key reason is that each fund actually follows different total market indexes. VTSAX follows the CRSP US Total Market Index. CRSP stands for Center for Research and Security Prices and is part of the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. It's probably the most comprehensive total market index that includes around 4,000 companies across mega, large, small, and micro capitalization. SWTSX, on the other hand, follows the Dow Jones US Total Market Index. Whereas CRSP US Total Market Index pretty much represents 100% of the US equity market, the Dow Jones US Total Market Index represents 95% of the US stock market based on market capitalization. While it includes pretty much all large, medium, and small cap companies, it excludes very smallest stock from its index. Thus, the reason that while CRSP US total market consists of around 4,000 stocks, the Dow Jones US total market index is closer to 3,500. And to complicate things further, FZROX follows another completely different index. It has its own in-house Fidelity US Total Investable Market Index. According to Fidelity, this index is designed to reflect the performance of stocks of large and mid-cap US companies. It has certain criteria for excluding certain companies based on market capitalization. Essentially, smaller companies are not included in this index and thus not reflected in FZROX, making it to only include around 2,600 companies compared to VTSAX's 4,000 or SWTSX's 3,500. You might be thinking at this point, I'm not sure if I like the fact that Fidelity and Swab excludes many small companies. I mean, in the case of FZROX versus VTSAX, we're talking about around 1,500 companies not being included. But before you solidify your decision here, Let's again take a step back and understand the scale of this impact. Remember, when a company is being represented in these funds, they're represented based on their market capitalization, their size. So a small company would not have the same level of representation as big boys like Apple or Google. If we were to compare the percentage representation of the top 10 companies in each fund, the percentage is barely different. VTSAX at 24.70%, SWTSX at 24.38%, and FZROX at 24.67%. Are there significant differences in the number of companies between these three funds? Yes, this is true. However, the impact it makes in percentage of total market capitalization is barely noticeable because the companies that are excluded in FZROX and SWTSX from VTSAX are actually less than 1%. So you might hear statements like VTSAX is the most diverse of all funds, so it's the best. Yes, this is a true statement, but put it in scale and know that the actual impact is not as big as some people might make it to be. All right, at this point, you might be thinking, Tay, you told me a lot of things without really telling you much. And actually, I agree. All the stuff I mentioned so far actually aren't real deal breakers. And if there was all there was to it, I would actually say that all three funds are pretty much the same. But for me, there is one key difference that makes one fund stand far above the others. And that is the firm overview. And I'm not talking about how awesome their website looks like or what cool new tools they recently launched, because frankly, these change constantly. I want to talk specifically about how the company is structured for its stakeholders, because this is what really matters. You show me what drives the company's incentives, and I believe you can envision where it will go in the future. Let's start with Charles Schwab. It was founded in 1971 by, as you can guess, Charles R. Schwab. Today, it's the seventh largest banking institution in the United States with over $8.5 trillion in client assets. It offers a range of financial services such as banking, investing, and wealth management services to its clients. But what's most notable about Charles Schwab in comparison to Fidelity and Vanguard is that it is a public company with stocks that trade in the market like any other publicly traded companies. And because it has stocks, its key shareholders are its stockholders who expect their stocks to continuously increase in value. And sometimes, it might need to do this at the expense of its employees and customers in form of higher costs or reduced services. Well, how about Fidelity? Fidelity is also an investment giant with $4.5 trillion in assets under management. However, unlike Charles Schwab, it is a private company. Its shares aren't traded in the public market, 
Rather, it is owned by the founding Johnson family, as well as its employees and ex-employees. So is this any better? Well, let's think about this. Yes, Fidelity might not have the wider pressure from all the public mass stockholders that Charles Schwab has to deal with, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have the pressure to keep its share prices high. The Johnson family, as well as employees, want their private shares of Fidelity to also increase in value. Yes, instead of like Charles Schwab where they need to manage the expectations of three parties, the shareholder, employees, and customers, Fidelity only needs to manage two parties, the employees and customers, given the shareholder and the employees are the same person. However, the pressure is still there to increase share value. And when push comes to shove, where do you think a private company like Fidelity will find more money for its shares? Employee salaries or expense to customers? And this is where Vanguard really shines above the rest. When Mr. Jack Pogo founded Vanguard in 1975, he started the company with a quite unique structure, unique from Charles Schwab and Fidelity. He structured Vanguard as client-owned and to operate at cost. What this means is that whereas in the case of Charles Schwab and Fidelity, the customers and the shareholders are always two different individuals. In the case of Vanguard, they're actually the same person. The company is owned by its funds. The company's funds are then owned by the customers, its shareholders. Thus, the customers are the true owners of Vanguard. Technically, Vanguard is incentivized to provide value to only one group of people that plays the role of both the customer and the owner. And this one criteria to me trumps all other criteria that I mentioned so far and makes VTSAX as my go-to total market index fund. Yes, does FZROX charge you nothing for you to invest with them? Yes, does SWSTX not require a minimum $3,000 to invest with them? All true statements. But for me, I'm investing for the long run. Not only does VTSAX have the longest track record with 30 years in existence, Vanguard's company structure is aligned to my personal interest. We'll never know if and when Fidelity might start charging for FZROX, or if and when Charles Schwab decides to increase his minimum for SWTSAX. But one thing I'm confident about is that Vanguard will always try to keep its costs low to its investors because it is inherently structured and incentivized to do so. But please don't take this video as a rally cry against FZROX and SWSTX. They are frankly great funds to hold given their low costs and broad market exposure. Compared to actively managed funds or individual stock picking, any of these three that I mentioned in this video will help you become a winning investor. So if your company 401k only offers SWSTX, or you already have all your money with Fidelity, so you're thinking about FZROX so you can keep all your money with one firm, go right ahead. As long as you're holding low cost total market index funds as your core holding, I think you're making an excellent decision. But if I had a choice, you know me, I'll always take VTSAX. Unless, of course, Vanguard decides to change things in their company structure. Thank you guys for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about what are some other awesome Vanguard funds to buy and hold forever, check out my video here. Thank you again. And until next time, all the best.